daughter friend that we had envisioned this going in a slightly different direction, you know, but it's still here and it's successful. You know, and the fact that it's here, um, I, I think, speaks volumes about us. All right. And she's right. The community has to stay alive and leading in regards to our community foundation. So I want you to learn the story about the Black Belt Community Foundation. You know, from 1999 on, I guess. But all of those who were working in nonprofits, you know, volunteering, trying to build community on all levels, that's the base of the Black Belt Community Foundation. So you learn the story and tell the story. And that was one thing I was hoping for, and maybe it'll come out in the next annual meeting, I mean, um, report. I think the founding members have been in there. You know? Because I want to be in that story always. So, so thank y'all very much for coming out and you know, when I, I'm going to stop because if I have to talk about the Black Belt Community Foundation, I can go on and on and on. Thank you. Because those hearts in the symbol, that's who we are. We are the hearts in that tree that go down through the roots. Thank you all so much for coming and enjoy. Always be adjusted. I'm talking to our communications team. And the next print of it will have, not the next year, but the next run that we do will have our founding board members listed. That's an easy thing to do. Yes, indeed. Ask and it shall be given. Is that not the word? So at this time, I want to also ask, I'm grateful to see Senator Sanders here. Sanders here as I think again about who was around the table when I had to interview for this position. I did ask him earlier if he would like to make some remarks, but I would like to open the floor to him if he would like to do so. When I think about taking what you have to make what, that's where I remember it first coming from is from the mouth of Senator Sanders. So at this time, welcome here. If y'all don't mind, uh, when you get to be 83 next year, you don't climb up on these things with the same facility. But let me just say that it's really good to be here. Uh, 20 years is a long time, but 25 years is even longer. Because then from 1999, to 2004, Roots was already being uh, planted, a uh, sunk, or whatever Roots do in order to be able to feed that which grows. Um, we had a call a Selma Collaborative. It's important to know that. And that was a, a range of organizations, community organizations. And we were working, and Dr. Carol Zippert was on um, the Babcock Foundation, I believe. And she went to a conference where they talked about community foundation. And so she brought that back to the Selma Collaborative. And so we began to work. And in 2000, we incorporated the Black Belt Community Foundation Incorporated. Well, then, we heard a couple of years later that somebody else wanted to have a Black Belt Foundation. And so we ended up meeting with them, and that was David Wilson. He was with uh, uh, Auburn. And then we got with Dorothy McMillan, who's here. And we got with uh, 
with Alabama Power, Julian Smith with Alabama. So we began to work together and we took off the Incorporated in 2004. And that was it. Now, three look One, um, we said, uh, you see here taking what we have and make what we need. That was my mother's, what she always said. My mother had 13 children, and we lived in a three-room house. But I never heard her complain. She always said, take what you have and make what you need. And I remember there was a discussion going on once about changing that, that, uh, that, that motto. And I remember Willie King, who was the blues man from Pickens yeah. County. Yeah! Y'all can get anything y'all want to. Can't change that. Anyway, I, I'm a, I, 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 Sometimes when you start talking about history, you talk too long. And, and, and I'm not going to talk too long. I want to say one last thing. I remember when we were developing um, this symbol, and Julian was with Alabama Power, so they were used to appointing a committee, and the committee would come back to them, and somebody would gratify. And we said, no, uh, we got to get community input. We even had children from schools to make them suggestions and all of that. When you, when you know all of these things, you get to know the roots. Some of us only see the, the limbs and the tree and everything. But roots always water what's above. Roots always feed what's above. Roots always study what's above when the wind begins to blow. With that, I'm going to just stop. Hey, is that not far you up? Because that is it, understanding the story. And I can say this, we had a strategic plan done earlier this year, and they said, you all should remove taking what you have to make what we need. So this might not be the right firm. So needless to say, we are still taking what we have to make what we need. So thank you so much for the success. And I know that we are asking for your indulgence as we bring on George McMillan, who is a former lieutenant governor of the state of Alabama. He was one of the founding board members at the board chair at one time. So you're not going to do like, you're going to do like Senator Sanders. Uh, Senator Sanders might be about a year and a half older than I am. But it's just as difficult for me to step up on the stairs. Uh, I think, and I'm so glad that Carol told the story, because it bothers me that the story is not told more often. And the founding of this foundation was one of the most unique experiences of my life, literally. We spent two years at Wallace Community College, and there were 16 of us, as I recall, and we sat around the table, courtesy of Dr. James Mitchell, and y'all cannot imagine everything that we discussed. I don't think any uh, community foundation has had a better genesis than did the Black Belt Community Foundation. And one of the most important parts to me was having community associates. And I'm so glad to see that that has uh, continued. And uh, uh, the community associates have the celebration in December. And uh, so one of the things I value most that I have done in my life is uh, help found the Black Belt Community Foundation. And in closing, I want to say that in my opinion, we would not have made 
20 years were it not for our president who has the most marvelous skills, Felicia yeah. yeah. Jones. for the opportunity. Um, and so I'm going to ask for just a little personal space because I remember coming to me, I remember coming, and let me just say this. I want to read a little bit of something to you from March 11th, 2003. At that time, my name was Felicia Jones, and it says, Dear Ms. Jones, on behalf of the Black Belt Regional Foundation Coordinating Committee, I am pleased to welcome you as a member of the committee. We have launched an initiative to develop a sustainable philanthropy within the Black Belt region. The primary mission of this foundation is to be a truly community-owned institution that recognizes communities as the fundamental asset of philanthropy. That's what I was asked for back in 2003 when I was invited on as a volunteer. So I'm not a minister, but after 20 years, I'm just going to ask that you will give me a moment to just share this with you. And of course, the scripture to me, Habakkuk came. And when the Lord answered him and said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. And everybody forgets the next verse, but it says, for still the vision awaits its appointed time. It will not lie. It will seem slow sometimes. But it will surely come. It will not delay. In 2003, that vision was written down. All right. 2003, that was just the day I got the invitation to come and serve. A lot had been going on before I even got to the table. But my point is when you write the vision down, you make it plain. So back before I even got on the committee, there had been a proposal put into the, to the Ford Foundation. Here's some language from that. This committee requests funding to support the planning and development of a community foundation in the Black Belt counties of Central Alabama. The primary purpose of this planning year will be to identify and organize local, state, and national assets into a revenue generated public charity that is able to specifically address issues of regional inequity in the Black Belt. Y'all, that was maybe 2002. The vision was written down more than 20 years ago. So when other people have just begun to talk about equity, folks who helped to start this foundation, equity had been on the table. It was nothing new. It was what they had been declaring for many of years that everybody should have a right and an opportunity for this. So I am just grateful to be at the helm that I will show them, because they could have easily chosen someone else to do this, but I am grateful to have been chosen to be in this spot. And when I think about the vision, when I think about us being at 609 Lauderdale, I remember on May 1st, 2004, going to Senator Sanders' office to get the key to that building that we were renting. Someone asked me today, what are you going to do with that building? We said, giving it back to the man who let us use it for all these years. And we are moving into our own space that is all to pay for. when you own versus when you rent. Amen, amen. Because it is truly yours. And most times people don't own or buy if they're planning to leave quickly, right? They use it because they're putting roots down. All right. So we have roots down and we plan to continue to do that this day. So we're celebrating 20 years of being in business and being in business for us means working hand in hand with you. We're celebrating having our own space. But let me just say what's amazing about this. This is where our staff works, but this space will be
will be open to community. If you need to have a community meeting, just like we use our conference room, you're welcome to use it. There won't be a fee to you to use it. We have small conference rooms that you can also use. You are welcome to bring your meetings to us. This building is not just about the folks who live there, but it's about all the folks who don't work in there, inside of it. It belongs to you too. So know that this is a celebration not just for some of us, but it is indeed a celebration for all of us. It is a celebration, y'all. I have to just take this moment as we acknowledge our founding members for having the vision and for writing it down and making it plain so that we can run with it. And I said to our team today, all gas, no brakes. Because we can't slow down now, right? We got this building. And the thing that I've been saying since earlier is greater works than these is what the Black Belt Community Foundation will do. We're not stopping with what we've done. This is great. I told them down on Broad Street on one of the buildings and have a whole, I got a lot of dreams for what could happen and what could be. But the idea is that we will do those things in response to what you need. I see Sharon here as we're dealing with waste going in Miles County and finding ways. The idea is to, and that's Sharon Bradley, raise your hand and turn the party. Knowing that people don't have adequate waste water in the black belt is an issue. We can't fix that overnight, but what we can do is help inform and help give folks the right information so that they can have access to it. And if we get enough voices around here crying out, we will be able to get resources to put into systems all across the black belt region of Alabama and across the state of Alabama. Nobody should have to worry about where their septic, where their feces go when they use the bathroom. You shouldn't have to worry about your child jumping around in there. But that's something we can change together because it is the power of us. So that's what we bring to the table today. So I thank our founding board members for the vision. I want to acknowledge other board members. Will you please raise your hand to stand, actually? Aubrey, I'm going to call everybody out if you don't stand all the that. And Veronica Drake, Aubrey Carter with Alabama Power, Veronica Drake with the Sumner County Industrial Court, Bernard Randolph with the Selma Housing Authority, Judge Marvin Williams, Ms. Darlene Robinson, Missy Clifford Hunter, Cheryl Smedley, Ken Webb, let me see who, Bob Turner, Tish Farrier, Tony Cherry, all the way from Choctaw County. Now I'm looking, but I want to make sure I don't miss Martha Lockett over there in the cut, in the pink shirt, all the way from Dallas County. She had a meeting and was coming to live today. And Miss Joy Henderson with Alabama Power, who is in Miss Tuskegee, as Judge England would say if he were here. Am I missing anyone? And who? And Condi Flowers, who's just walking in with the red. And the reason I asked them to stand, you all, because for all the work that's done, oh, you, well, it has to come through this board of directors. And some are on the board, past and present. You've met the founders. I don't know if you all want to stand. But this is how the work happens. The staff, we are fortunate to have the opportunity to do it, but if they don't give us the thumbs up we can move, it doesn't happen. So I can't take credit for this, the staff can't take credit, but we have a board of directors who's progressive, who's forward thinking, who wants to serve the community in the way that this community wants to be served. So will you join me in giving them a hand? Thank you, BBCL board members, founders, former, and present. And for those of you who may be on the board one day soon, now I have to take a moment to acknowledge our community associates. If you are a community associate with the Black Belt Community Foundation, I want you to stand. And I want you to say that when Dr. Hill was on our board, who's not here now, he would always say that the community associates were the hearts and soul, or the eyes and ears. Because these a network across 12 counties in Alabama's Black Belt. So that when you are threatening a, a um, congressional because of the census, you can move across 12 counties to 
make sure your sense of seat, if your congressional seat is not taken away from you. You can make sure that you are fairly represented. These are the individuals who, when we have something going on, when we just said, should we do Head Start? We talked with this group before we made the decision to do it. We don't just make the decision in house, but we talk about it because we can't carry it ourselves. So I want to just say thank you to the community associates of the Black Oak Community Foundation for all of your hard work and for making us shine. That's how we shine. acknowledge, I don't know if it's last, but I would like to acknowledge our staff. And I'm proud to say that I remember on May 1st of 2004 when I came, it was just me. Maybe a couple of weeks later, my first hire, who was part-time because she was on a summer break, was Erica Woods. And that was in 2004, and Erica's been hanging with us in some way, shape, form, or fashion ever since then. And I want to thank my cousin Audrey because she made that connection. And I was like, my first hire was truly one of my best hires because she has been here. Thank you, Erica. But I'd like to acknowledge all of our staff members. Will you raise your hand? Shimon Webster. Will you all come, come join me on the stage? Many of you have seen their faces. So I would like for you to come and join me on the stage, please, if you work for the Black Belt Community Foundation. Yes. I'm thinking I'm speaking a different language. Yeah. And I know they're all a little tired because we've been excited waiting to see you all today. I will say that. And then if, you're in some way, if you work for the Black, if your paycheck says Black Belt Community Foundation, I want you to be around somewhere. Well, they need a couple. Mr. Mr. Carson? Mr. Carson? Yes, Hope Ambassadors. All of our Head Start staff should be around or up here with us. They actually. You all, the only reason I want you to see these individuals because this is how the work is done across 12 counties. It span all the way from the western part of Choctaw, Sumner, and Pickens. All way eastward to Macon and Bullock counties. This is how work is done along with the community associates, along with the board members. So it's no one person or one individual that makes it happen, but it's the collective of us all that makes this happen. So I want to say to this staff, I want to say thank you. And I want you to stand with me as I share this journey that perhaps back in um, 2013 or four, maybe 2014 we began to look for a building. We really had our eye on an old home that was out of our price range, but we knew we needed a space where we were no longer renting. And there was a young lady who's no longer with us, identified several spots. Her name was Andrew Soule. This was one of the three spots that made the final cut. And it was cheap. That was number one. So we were able to get a mortgage on it. And I remember being at a community associates retreat, leaving to go and sign the mortgage. And thankfully, the, one of the blessings of COVID is through the PPP money, we were able to pay off our mortgage. So that is why we own this building. wasn't up from donations, but we were able to take that money and use it for that purpose. And then we were able to partner with others to do many other renovations on the inside. So when we identified it, we had to have someone to help us. Felicia is an accountant by trade. I do not know how to, I don't know how to do any other stuff to make the building go from what it was to what it is. That's the best way to say it. So I want to lift up Serena Lowe, who played a role in helping us secure an architect to help us design for what we needed, to look over the CAD drawings, to have these hard discussions with me about what it needed to look like. I want to thank you for your time and energy placed in doing that. Because once we got that done, then we said, now we got to find money. So we went, and there were all of us who were around the table helping us to find money. And then the next part came was working with the contractor to make it a reality. Finding someone who would work within our budget, and God is good. I know this is a God journey because that's the only way that we hear. We were able to have a contractor who 
he he knew that we didn't pay him for everything and he didn't charge us for everything initially. So we got a really good deal on that. And you know that when it comes to money, that ain't nobody but God, because people don't play about their money. If they don't play about anything, it's not the money. So we worked and got the building. Then following that, we had to make it appealing. And our dream and goal was to make this a place where community felt at home. So when you walked in the building, and I stole this from our 609, we wanted people to feel the spirit of the black building. We had quilts from the um, from the society on display. We had things that it was manufactured in Greene County on display. So we said, how do we make this happen? So again, Felicia Counter, I don't do decorations, but there was a young lady on our team, Dr. Stacy Nixon. Stacy, where are you? Instead of here with the goose. Thanks, Susan. And Susan, too. Yeah, she's trying to play Susan. The Stacy is the one that you walk inside the building, you will see art the curated for us. You will see yourselves represented in that space. We hope that you will feel at home. And not only that, she had to work through. I think about Darlene connected us. We were intentional about trying to find a black interior designer. We wanted someone who could help us with the space. Darlene introduced us to a firm, and Stacy worked with them to help us find the right furniture, make it all match. I match clothes, not really furniture, but when you go inside, you will be amazed at what you see. So, Stacy, I want to say to you, thank you for your work in curating the art that represents us, for making this place a place for community. Susie is standing next to Stacy, but we had to make this building, we had to have new windows. We had to have some new paving, to have trees cut down. We had to have doors installed. I'm an accountant major. Susie Manning, thank you. Susie made this happen. Susie made us have green grass where there was none before. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. There were a lot, a lot of hands at work. I think about our maintenance team who were hanging the art, uh, making sure that whatever needed to be put up was there. So I want to just say thank you to each of you. And not only that, when we were preparing for this, let me tell you how community is alive in Community Foundation. As we were putting together the bags, our community came together to help us put these bags together. I had a community associate a picture, a framed picture of Dr. Dorothy Height that she said it needs to be in this building. And what that said to me, Carol, you would say, I want people to say this community foundation, when they ask you, what is the Black Belt Community Foundation, I want them to say it is me. And I felt her saying it was me because she felt comfortable decorating her home in a way that represented her. So it is all of us that makes this happen. So we hope that we will all celebrate. So with that being said, we want to take a moment. Thank you, staff. Please give them a hand. So the, there are only two more things we have left before we move forward. Darren. Darren. Does Clifford have the... At this... Okay. At this time, we'd like to have a presentation from Mr. Clifford Hunter, who represents Dallas County on our board of directors. Good afternoon. Proclamation by the Governor of Alabama. Whereas the Black Belt Community Foundation, BBCL, has been a vital philanthropic organization serving the Black Belt region and contributing to Alabama for two decades. And whereas honoring organizations like BBCL, whose tenacity has weathered economic recessions, natural disasters, and the pandemic, all while continuing to grow in service to the community they serve. He speaks to the resilience and hard work ethic of Alabama's Black Belt and Alabama as a whole. 
And whereas, founded in 2004, BBCF represents the vision of communities and their citizens who seek to transform the areas of economic development, health and wellness, education, arts, and culture while building capacity for the community's food. Whereas, BBCF has been a leader in several Alabama firsts, such as spearheading the 2020 United States Census outreach with record participation results for the Black Belt. And whereas in the moments of the Black Belt community's most dire needs, such as the aftermath of the tornado tragedy of January 12th, 2023, BBCF was key in raising millions of dollars of direct funding and humanitarian aid for communities across the region. And whereas for two decades, BBCF has granted millions of dollars across the region to support the good work of community organizations working to transform their communities. And whereas BBCF is celebrating 2024 as their 20th anniversary as an organization with the grand opening and ribbon cutting for their new office headquarters located right here at 14 Church Street in Selma, Alabama. The, rehab the rehabilitation of the property is for the simple Felicia and example of their solid faith and investment in the community. Now, therefore, the governor of Alabama, Governor Kay Ivey, do hereby proclaim May 1 as Black Belt Community Foundation presented to you by our governor, Governor Kay Ivey. Congratulations. At this time, we'd like to make a presentation to the Selma High Band. We want to thank them for indulging us and marching with us and providing the music as we made our entrance uh, to our new facility. So I'm going to ask some of our board members, particularly Lee Pinar, to come up and help us with this presentation. We'd like to make a presentation of one thousand dollars to the Hill Selma High School. Yeah. And so oftentimes when we make requests, we don't always think of ways of helping to support to fund and support their work. But to say to them thank you for being here and for making the time to share their gifts with us. So thank you. Thank you. And lastly, we will have our ribbon cutter. You will be able to tour the facility. And as you tour the facility, there will be staff members who will be around to tell you about our different programs. Or if you wonder, what is TRHT or what is the Head Start program doing? I do want to say this. If you have any babies ages 3 to 5, approach 3 to 5, we need them a Head Start. So see and talk to any of our team. We have to use this as a recruiting opportunity. The sooner our babies learn, the sooner they will be on a path to excellence. So with that being said, we do have the ribbon cutting. We'd like to ask those of you who would like to participate with us. Yes, thank you. Jamal was reminding me, I got ahead of myself. Brother Bob Turner, we're asking you to come and to do, to do the dedication prayer for our new building, 14 Church Street. May, may we pray? My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Lord, hear us while we pray. Take all our guilt away. Our Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for enabling the Black Bill Community Foundation to be able to move into a new building. Now God, we ask that you watch over this building. Now God, we ask that you will take care of this building. Now God, the people who work inside the buildings, watch over them. 
keep them safe and in your care. Father God, we thank you for this day. We praise you. We magnify your name. For you are a good God. And we praise you. Bless the entire Black Built Community Foundation step. Bless the founders. Bless the board members who presently sit. Bless the community associates. Bless each Head Start teacher. Each Head Start worker. Each Head Start student. God bless this Black Bill. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother Bob. Before we head to our ribbon cut ceremony, I want to ask um, Chris Spencer to come on, come up front if you would. And I want to ask Chris uh, to come up front because when I think about um, this work, I think about when I was a volunteer, I was at the Hawks, the first meeting in Sumter County. Chris Spencer was there. I've known him for a long time, even though he's much older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which he is older, <laughs> but I've known Chris for a long time, and I always say that Chris is probably one of the individuals whose love for the black girl rivals mine. And I want to just personally say to him, because Chris doesn't always ask for the floor, but he stands and he's ready to work at whatever place possible. Yeah! So, Chris, I want to say to you, thank you for all that you've done, for all that you do, and all that you will do, for all the headaches you have given me. Because I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be said that he didn't give me headaches. He's given me headaches. But this brother loves hard, and he works hard. Yeah. And he loves the people of this black girl. All right. So Chris Spencer, thank you, sir. Thank you. He said you didn't want to let me say nothing. I know, I know. That's the headache part I was talking about. <laughs> Early this morning, so last night we were setting everything up, and we were thinking about how we're gonna watch these generators, chairs, and all this stuff. So we worked it out. We had a young man that said, "I'll volunteer and do security for you guys." And so early this morning, about six o'clock, I had to relieve him for security. So I sent Felicia a text. I said, yeah, I know you and Dr. Zip were hoping this building up 20 years ago. But I was the first one to unlock the doors today. I was the first one to cut the lights on today. So let your lights so shine before me that they will see your good works and give God the glory. to make this time a good time for us. We have food vendors who are around for us, but we hope that you will take a chance. We see the line at the barbecue place down. No, we got two barbecue places. Well, we have two food trucks at the very end. Barbecue, fish, chicken, hamburgers, hot dogs. And we have some light affair for those who choose not to indulge. We got some salads and fruit salads along the way with the coffee shop who is graciously providing for us. We have an ice cream truck when you need a little something sweet at the end. So we are, I'm going to ask your mom since he's here if he will bless our food. And following this we will move to our ribbon cutting ceremony and then you will be free to um, enjoy as you wish. Thank you. Let us pray. Most gracious and almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the purpose of our gathering. We ask, for oh God, that you would bless our time of fellowship. Ooh, that, this will that this will continue to be a time where this community will continue to celebrate our past, present, and anticipate our future. Bless and sanctify the hands who have prepared it for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.